This group of COVID-19 support volunteers in Bangkok is getting ready for another busy shift. As Thai hospitals buckle under the strain of coronavirus patients, they're run off their feet. Every day they receive around 100 calls from desperate COVID patients unable to get help. We realize how hardworking and how tired doctors and nurses are. What we're trying to do is help relieve some of the burden. Before, all cases had to be sent to hospital. Today, there are no hospital beds, so we volunteer to help out. Their first call takes them to a woman who's having trouble breathing. They provide her with an oxygen tank. Then, it's on to the house of another woman whose sister is sick with COVID. She says their mother has already died of the virus. My mother showed bad symptoms from the beginning. I called and called to tell them that my mum couldn't handle this anymore, but nobody came. The nurses kept saying there were no beds. In Bangkok alone, around 20,000 people are currently waiting for a hospital bed. After keeping COVID at bay when it first emerged, Thailand is now going through its worst stretch of the pandemic. Fueled by the Delta variant, daily new infections are going up and up, hitting another record high on Monday. Vaccinations are progressing at a slow pace. Only about 5% of the population is fully immunized. This vaccination center in Bangkok was overrun after it started accepting walk-ins last week. Public anger has forced the head of the National Vaccine Institute to apologize for mishandling the vaccination campaign. He also promised to ramp up vaccine procurement by joining the COVAX distribution scheme, so Thailand will start receiving vaccine donations next year. For those risking their lives working on the front line of the pandemic, that will seem like a long way off. The pandemic in Thailand has contributed to more dissatisfaction with Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha, with protesters once again taking to the streets. They risk infection and heavy penalties for ignoring coronavirus restrictions. This month marks one year since the emergence of the biggest challenge to the military establishment when activists called for democratic reform. Ducking for cover in Bangkok as police fire water cannon, rubber bullets and tear gas to stop protesters reaching government house. Defying a ban on public gatherings, they had assembled at the Democracy Monument in the Thai capital to restate their calls for Prime Minister Prayut Chanocha to step down. The clashes mark a year since protesters first took to the streets en masse with their demands for democratic reform, posing the biggest challenge to the Prime Minister since he took power in a 2014 coup. The protests also took on a taboo topic, the King, criticising the royal family as a crime in Thailand, punishable by lengthy prison sentences. But in a show of defiance, a group of protesters installed a plaque near the Grand Palace, which read, this country belongs to the people and not the King. The bold gesture was accompanied by speeches and slogans challenging the king's spending and power. A confrontation that was soon greeted with an official rebuke. By October, the government had issued an emergency decree designed to end the protests on Bangkok streets. The government deems it necessary to declare a state of emergency. Our goal is to ensure we can act against the protests because they've turned violent. There are many things happening that have never happened before. Weeks later, the most prominent protest leaders face charges of insulting the monarchy. If the monarchy uses the law to shut us up, it means they're afraid of us speaking the truth. The measures quelled but did not crush the pro-democracy movement. And new demonstrations have erupted throughout 2021. Dissatisfaction over the government's handling of the pandemic is now adding fuel to the discontent. 
Thailand's experiencing its most deadly wave since the virus emerged, driven by the Delta variant. Vaccines are in short supply and the economic impact is biting hard. Joining us is Kaj Satrasayang, editor-in-chief of Thai Inquirer. Kaj, the protesters are making a calculation. They're willing to risk legal consequences and contracting COVID. Why do you think this is happening? Um, I believe that they've gotten to a point where they think that, you know, there's nothing, it, it's not going to get any worse for them. I mean, we, we're, we're in a free-falling economy. People are out of jobs. People are really desperate. People don't have enough to eat. And the protesters just say enough is enough. They need a change of governance. They need a change of leadership, not only to be able to handle, you know, the situation with COVID, which has gone terribly over the last six months, but also because the political system has come to a head and they've gotten to a point where they think there needs to be a wholesale change of politics here, where the military and the conservative establishment is no longer involved in the governance of the country. Now, last summer's protests lost a bit of momentum in later months with people staying at home. Where do you think this second summer of protests will take the movement? Well, the reason that it sort of simmered down was uh, there was a multitude of reasons, rather. Um, first of all, COVID situation came back into play and people weren't willing to risk as much back in, let's say, October or November of last year. Um, the protesters also encountered a lot of physical resistance from, from the armed forces, whether it's the police or the soldiers. So a lot of people were worried about, you know, physical contact or coming into bodily harm. Now that it's gotten, now that it's a year later and the situation hasn't gotten any better in terms of the economy and COVID, I think people are more willing to risk, you know, their livelihoods themselves um, in the pursuit of something that they think will bring about positive change for the country. Where it takes us, I don't know. The country is still in lockdown until at least um, the end of this month. Um, there's plans by the government to open up by October if that is the case and if the COVID situation does die down. I don't think that the anger that the people on the streets feel is is going to subside with the reopening of the country. I think, if anything, it's going gonna, it's gonna to make more people come out in the streets because the COVID situation is under control, because they're willing to, to, to go out and let the government know about their demands and, and their right to be heard. Now, the movement has largely been viewed as one being driven by students with the establishment middle class not on board. Do you see this changing based on what you just told me? Absolutely. If you had asked me last year whether that was the case, I would say you're absolutely correct, that this was a largely student-inspired, student-pushed, student-led movement as far back as, let's say, October of 2020. Fast forward a year, and, and if anything, everyone is angry now, not just the students. The middle class are angry because their businesses are closed. The working class are angry because they have no jobs, they have no access to income, they have no access to loans, which has been prohibitive. Um, they have no access to food and basic necessities. And and even, even the conservative establishment, people who aren't directly in the government, are becoming more angry and becoming more upset with this government because of their mismanagement, because there's no more tourism money, because the country's been closed down for almost two years now. Um, because they don't, ha because their businesses aren't allowed to operate the way they want it to. So a cro the cross section of Thai society is extremely upset with this current government, and I don't see that changing. And I don't see the economic situation improving miraculously overnight. So if anything, more people are angry now, and I think the students, if they, if they voice their message correctly, they're going to gain a lot of supporters. Now, I want to turn to the pandemic more directly. You're there. Give us a sense of how you and everyone around you are feeling in terms of safety, in terms of your health. Well, <laughs> I, my team and I at Time Choir have been working from home now for almost eight months straight um, because of the COVID situation, because we don't want to risk it. The only people that are out in the field are our, our photographers and our videographers who, who have been vaccinated. So it's 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 a tough situation. People are angry. And, and the, the reason they're most angry is because the vaccine rollout has been so slow. Um, uh, there's been a series of blunders by the Ministry of Public Health, um, not ordering the right vaccines, not ordering enough vaccines. So, and, 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 and the situation go, just goes from bad news to bad news. So until our entire population can be vaccinated, 
it's just it's just not going to be any better with even with the lockdown. In terms of our daily lives, um, right now we're entering the most severe phase of the, the newest lockdown. So malls are closed, restaurants are shuttered. It's it's been rough. Um, but but and, and and until we can get the entire population vaccinated, I don't see it getting better. Got it. Cod Sachasayam, thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. And here's a roundup of how the pandemic is impacting other parts of Southeast Asia. The region has become an epicenter of the contagious Delta variant. Malaysia says it won't extend its coronavirus emergency beyond August 1st. The country's parliament is convening this week for the first time this year. Indonesia has announced that some coronavirus measures will be relaxed, even though it's still grappling with a huge outbreak. Salons and restaurants with outdoor areas will be among the businesses allowed to reopen. And residents in Vietnam's economic hub, Ho Chi Minh City, face a strict overnight curfew from today. They are required to stay at home from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's it for today. As you know, there's always more on our website, dw.com forward slash Asia, and you can catch us on social media. We'll leave you with pictures of Buddhist monks in Thailand lighting candles for the Asana Bucha Festival with, of course, prayers for those battling COVID. Thank you for watching.